Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to our wellness podcast and my today's guest is Mr. V. Hello, I'm the physiotherapist in our clinic for yeah. 9, 10 years. 9 or 10 years? Oh, I lost the count. Okay, okay. So you're not only a physiotherapist, you're also a dog dad. I'm full-time physiotherapist and yeah. part-time lab Labrador okay. uh, dad. I have the chocolate one. Uh, she's very fit because I'm physiotherapist and everyone around me have to be fit. So our today's main topic is of course hip replacement. We are concentrating on that but with Venus uh, communication is very very uh, I don't know even how to express it. Well let's say you are very communicative. Usual and casual. Uh, yeah. You, you like to talk, but you are a genuine talker. You like people in, in general, I believe. Yeah, I, uh, in rehab, it's very important to communicate with the people because you can take their mind from the hip and from the pain, for example. Then while they're doing exercises, they can just relax and do exercises comfortable way. Uh, we have a nice conversation, which is usually in other clinics lack of that. Yes. Because communicating, I think, is quite a uh, big role, doing big role in the rehab. Okay, let's go to straight to hip replacement uh, physiotherapy. So you do have uh, hip replacement patients from uh, abroad and today we will be focusing on them because Wellness Travels is a medical tourism company, so it's only logical to to speak about them. Uh, but no, actually first, is there a difference in terms of length of uh, physiotherapy with you, the individual one? Do Lithuanians spend more time with you after hip replacement? Uh, usually when Lithuanians come to me after the hip replacement, they usually have been in one of the, uh, se not one sessions, but uh, some period of rehab mm -hmm. for the first step. Uh, so when they come, they are usually a little bit stronger. Uh, if we're talking about uh, foreign people, I start from the first day with them. Mm -hmm. So with Lithuanians, I usually start after some period of time. They come to me after two months, for example, with the... Post-operation. Post-operation, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the foreigners, I start from the first day. I come and I say, hello, my name is uh, Venus, you can call me V. And then I throw them out of the bed and we start working. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, to compare Lithuanians and foreign people, uh, rehab, it's a little bit different. Because uh, as uh, one of my patients, uh, Candy, said, I'm a pusher. Mm -hmm. So Another one said you are a slave driver? Yeah, so they, they told me that because... Uh, I if usually feel that we have not enough time, we have a very short time and I need to reach, uh, as I say, the things they can uh, achieve fast. Mm -hmm. So stairs, sitting in the car, walking without the crutches, to keep them motivated. So now you see what you can do by, just by doing exercises and keep doing exercises. And usually we keep in touch, they write me emails, even... Uh, Two days ago, I got an email from Canada. A patient sent me a video how he's sitting in his Miata. Because we talked a lot. I've searched him for the sports car to find as close as he can get. And he sends me a video and says, it's only five weeks. You see, I can sit in Miata. Mm -hmm. And he drives away from there. And it's good. It's fantastic. Uh, this keeps motivating when you know when they are patients keep doing what they ask to do and they try to achieve yeah. bigger things. Yeah. So <clears throat> let's go, uh, let's reverse a little bit. So when the foreigner comes to you, he has a operation. Yes. Four hours after the surgery, you come to his no. room. Uh, four hours after surgery, it's more or less six hours after six the hours surgery. After sur nurses, come? nurses comes to them. Uh, they are taught by me what to do uh -huh. because usually it's uh, late evening. I, I work long hours, but not that long hours. Yeah. And uh, they put him on the legs mm -hmm. for first walk. 
Yeah, so for, let's for standing and for walk. Emphasize: you get out up out of bed straight after hip replacement, basically. Yes, yes. it's titanium. Is it won't it break. Safe? Yes, it's titanium. It won't break. Okay, but so, that's like, but it, yes, it sounds yes. like a torture, my goodness. Uh, it's hard school, but uh, <clears throat> yes, they stand, but they have some uh, equipment which helps them. Like to crutches. Stand. Crutches or the. Uh, that uh, walker but it's for just their stability because they still have some medicine and they're a little bit dizzy yeah, after it's like they is like they had a very hard party mm. and they stand and so it's a very at the same we're pushing but i always keep the safe line and uh, you know it's very hard and yes they stand sometimes they even go if it's a healthier or a stronger patient they go to the toilet mm -hmm. and return and yes, from the next day in the morning, mm -hmm. 9, sometimes 8 a.m., come in, uh, pushing those doors, shouting, no. <laughs> stand, stand, he's let's walk, walk. He's lovely. Yeah. He's lovely, he's communicative, he's always cracking up jokes, he's very smart, and really, just, I think you, you were you born to be a physiotherapist it's my honest opinion of you um i, I feel in in right place so yeah, yeah, think, yeah sure 100 percent, 100 percent. you love your job like so much it shows um another question for me is so okay let's say a person who is going to have a surgery really soon and is traveling to lithuania uh is watching our podcast and he's thinking how often uh, will my sessions with a physio be? Uh, will I be alone in the room? Uh, what kind of like everything? Can you talk through yeah. the process? Yeah, of it? I understand. It's usual question. Yeah. Uh, usually it goes like this: they living uh, on their own in the private rooms, uh, except that uh, sometimes. Some neighbors from other rooms can attend if they get friendly, talk and they communicate. So only persons they come to their room is their neighbors or me and uh, my colleagues. Mm -hmm. So uh, usually on the first day after rehab, we spend mostly walking in the corridor and in, in the room because I still need to wait some time for uh, medicine go out from uh, from the body uh, to have full sensations etc but yes i come on the first day i teach everything i need they need to know and they start doing that uh, then five six times in a day i come to ask how you're doing i was i always keep an eye on them and uh, from the second day after operation we start working and it's twice a day they come to my place where we are doing physio if it's harder to for them first days come, then I come to their room and we mm -hmm. somehow start still doing rehab and we're doing it twice a day. It's in morning and the afternoon sessions. Uh, and between the sessions, they will usually have massage or some electricity therapy or the lympho drainage socks uh, because still there is a rehab doctor who uh, uh, who looking through how we're doing, more, more or less looking through uh, the rehab plan that you need this this procedure or a little bit more swelling the knee or the, the leg, and then you can have a little bit more that. But usually they look like that, that you wake up, you get the breakfast and immediately after that you go to the session with me. Uh, then massage, electricity, lunch, and again, it's me. You even don't have a time for naps mm -hmm. though still sometimes i come after the lunch and I, you know, I wake them up and say never-ending torture with yeah, this one <laughs> yeah. where you are you have to be at my place and everything okay you're fine or why you didn't oh i've been tired they say and yeah yeah sometimes you can uh, you can uh, have a agreement with me that Today I will skip because I'm tired and I need rest. Yes, sometimes I do the load, but it's uh, sometimes usually afternoon session. We uh, we take out one of our meetings and from the day and after we start again, cruel and uh, hard working. 
Okay, um, Venus, answer me this. You mentioned when I asked you about the first hours after the surgery that the person is uh, standing up on his or her feet. You said I or my nurses are training him or her to do this. What is there to train? You either stand up or you don't. Uh, there is some minor rules when you have real replacement, hip replacement, mm -hmm. because in the first days it's crucial. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, there is minor rules how to get out and get in the bed, how uh, how to move, what to do and what not to do, because still usually cuts are made through the muscles they get weak and there is a minor possibility of dislocation but uh, usually because the people paying money and they're getting uh, sport, suitable for sports hip mm -hmm. it's uh, very hard to dislocate but it's possible and we want to avoid this possibility till the muscles are healed and strong enough and then you can do the, everything you want yeah, but in general, you cannot like do this yeah, on your own by in, in instinct. You have to yeah, because know a certain a, mechanism. Yes, there is a lot of still there is a lot of sensation loss because of medicine. The legs uh, seem not. Yeah. Sometimes they feel uh, one leg is longer or not, and you measure it, it's not, and it's just yes. sensation time. It's still, it's still operation. We're not the machines that you. Take out the part, put in the part, and now we can go. Sure. No, you still need to learn. As I usually making joke that now you got new improvement, and I will lead you through the guidance how to use that. Mm -hmm. Then it goes like this. Okay. How many physiotherapists work at Gios Clinic? Uh, we have a lot of. Uh, for example, if as I told. Uh, Lithuanian people after hip replacement goes to other colleagues, which is four or five, mm -hmm. which is only working with the endoprothesis. And I have uh, six or seven more colleagues, which were um, more than half of them, though I think all of them, uh, except uh, Ruslan is the oldest one, he, I was his protege. Mm -hmm. And all others are more or less had some practices at me and I saw how they're thinking, how they're doing and I tried to uh, give them job and keep them next to me to have a professional colleagues next to me. Yeah, so, so uh, we have uh, like a lot of, a lot a of, lot, a, a lot of uh, physiotherapists here. I think we have two different physiotherapy rooms. Yes, as I told, one is... Uh, 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 if you count all in all in the building, we have three. Oh, three, okay. Yes, uh, that is stationary rehab and mm -hmm. ambulatory rehab. Mm -hmm. So it's stationary where the people stays, Lithuanian people stays after amputees and re joint replacements, and they work in only one room. And we have the second one where it's usually sports people, uh, child, uh, kids, mm -hmm. uh, teenagers, uh, working with their postures or some muscle tears in two different uh, other rooms. Mm -hmm. So one of the rooms are mine and uh, other is for yeah. the colleagues. So actually it's very um, big usual. Clinic. Yeah, it's a very big clinic, very orthopedics oriented. Not only that, but really this is the... Um, Posher and the age development is two orthopedics because newborns at a three yeah. month age has to yeah. see their yeah. hips to avoid their placements. So actually in our corridors it's a really usual thing to see a very very famous sportsman like from yes. LT national team, Olympic yeah, team. Yeah, usually uh, basketball players, uh, swimmers, swimmers I believe, yeah, uh, deaf sportsmen. Uh, 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 ice hockey we had, uh, oh, yeah, 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 more or less all um, so back to hip replacement, so Venus, okay, you um, kind of work with your people in these uh, <clears throat> physiotherapy rooms, there are some equipment, so what is the most important thing, uh, which muscle group or, I don't know, in, yeah. in hip replacement? I understand the question, yes, we use a lot of equipment, but more or less I usually use uh, some sort of exercise machine which is close to the leg press. Uh, it's filled by air so you can control the hardness of it uh, quite easily. 
It's uh, good for uh, patients to sit in because you keep the angles safe for them. And uh, yes, we usually work on the hamstrings group and uh, most of the time on the glutes. Mm -hmm. Because as I told, uh, many doctors cut th through the glutes mm -hmm. and you need to fire them up, you need to strain them to have uh, good results. You also do some outside work. So you train people to do daily activities, even getting in and out of the car. Yes, it's it's very needed skill because everyone has a car. Any, anyone will need to go from plane to home by a taxi, by their own car, or driven by a son or a daughter or husband uh, and wife. Uh, but yes, and it's it's skill what's needed now, perhaps 200 years before when there wasn't so many cars and it wasn't important mm -hmm. and they haven't been doing this kind of operations. But now it's very important and you even that's why I sometimes ask what kind of car you're driving because I need to know if you will be going in a high car, for example, truck or something, or you will be going in sports car, which is very low and it's little... It, the technique to get in it's very similar, but... Uh, it's better to train that in similar cars. So usually, some not usually. I always take the cars which are used for from for, by our managers, and uh, sometimes I borrow the cars from my friends or uh, colleagues to have similar cars. Yeah. So after, let's say, I think in general one week uh, at. The facility post operation is the time the people from Great Britain and Canada, for example, choose. Um, after one week, when they do fly home, uh, do you give them other instructions how to uh, train yeah. yourself? Further? Yeah, usually I have now made uh, some uh, list of exercises which they need to continue doing with the pictures and uh, description of how to do it. And I tell them that now you for two, three months need to work with that and then you need to see the local physio or you could do to the air or something, video call, and then we can uh, improve the program. But I, you, now I give them a sheet of paper, it's four or five papers, mm -hmm. it's big pictures. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think many people would like to know when can I expect getting my life back completely? Just forget that something was done to me. Yeah, completely. Some people, it's usually dependent on how active you've been before the operation. And uh, after operation, uh, it uh, takes six, seven, eight, for some people, one year to return fully to forget the hip. But half a year, it's quite nice time to just live and sometimes just remember that we have you have a hip or a knee replacement, but let's say middle is eight months. Mm -hmm. So with your new brand new hip, can you get back to professional sports? Mm, yeah. Yeah? yeah, but you need to work it uh, even harder than I work with other people. Mm. Yeah, so <laughs> 10 days is not enough to see me and it's for six months or seven months to work twice a day without any weekends. Without mm -hmm. that. Even here we work with the people in the weekend. I come uh, for one day, uh, one time sessions. They'll take a little bit longer than usual sessions and we do a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it there's no holiday or rest time for muscles. They have to work. They mm -hmm. have to do their job because you need to move and you need to go somewhere and do something. They have to work. Okay. Um, I don't know. I think from my end of point, I am done with my interview. Um, do you have something to add maybe from your mm, point of view? From my point of view, if you're planning to come here or you're thinking about doing the even not here but doing somewhere re joint replacement it doesn't matter if it's hip or if it's knee or if it's shoulder 
you have to prepare your muscles even before the operation. Yes, it's a little bit sore and everything, but the better muscles you have before operation, the faster and better rehab it will be post. Doesn't matter if you will be working with me or with other colleagues. I, I don't like to go and like work with me and you will have the best results. Sometimes shit happens. And, uh, but uh, the better muscles are until the operation, the better they will be post. So I always tell people message to take away. So keep moving, keep exercising, keep doing exercises. Don't stop moving. As as a, one of my Lithuanian patients who was 100 years old, he had both uh, hips. Excuse me, 100? Yes, he had both uh, hips replaced and one knee. And uh, he, he always uh, were pushing, doing exercises. Yes, with the 100 years old, you won't do squats or something. But it will be some exercises as hard as squats. But he was pushing and he was pushing me. Because his number one task was to go to the shop to buy ice cream to bring for his uh, uh, niece and nephews, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For for grand uh, grandkids, mm -hmm. for grandkids, and we managed to do that task. And he went uh, then with the bus to his son to see how he's doing. Oh. Everything is possible if you keep doing exercises, and it's even will be easier in shorter time. A little bit shorter time if you'll do it before operation yeah if that's possible because in some cases the hip pain even is... in some severe pain if the physio has everything here and things are not only tries to earn the money uh, you can do really yes okay. and uh, really I, I don't like the physios who are just trying to earn and do simple stuff and take some big money. Uh, it's our job as a doctors to help people to move and feel better. Mm -hmm. well, yes, we don't do any uh, operation, but as our doctors say, I've done my job, I replaced the part. It was the easiest job. Now the hardest job for you is to keep, to, to start moving and uh, strengthen. It's like that and yes you need to work in the team you need to communicate with the doctor and everything yeah um all right so thank you so much for your time actually it wasn't that easy to book a venus for this conversation i had to come like two weeks ago or something uh, like some, that something like three weeks ago uh, three or two weeks ago so yeah I'm, I'm feeling really fortunate to have him here and to tell um you guys his side of things so i think you will see him um really really soon in another patient story because okay. our patients just adore him especially ladies <laughs> uh, one of my professions i wanted to be an actor so <laughs> yeah. dream come true okay so bye <laughs>